Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I want to chat with you guys today about, well, something interesting that, that happened. Um, I know you guys, a lot of you guys know I'm doing the 10,000 Small Businesses program for Goldman and Sachs, and it is, it's fantastic. Um, and I'm learning a lot and I'm meeting a lot of really cool people, and it's also giving me opportunities to network with other people and things like that. And recently I found myself, and this is like kind of neither here nor there when it comes to Goldman Sachs, but um, having all these conversations, learning about entrepreneurship, learning more about business in general. Y'all, I've been in business for 20 years, but there's nothing like rubbing shoulders with other people that have been in business, that have started their own businesses, that have grown those businesses, that are like-minded people that know exactly what you're going through. And it's interesting to me because I've also read and studied a lot of different characteristics of, of like successful people and successful entrepreneurs and make my own observances and see not only my own life, but all of the clients and people I work with. And now um, all these Goldman Sachs students who are all from all walks of life, from all different kinds of businesses, like everything from childcare to IT, uh, code writing to um, car detailing to um, professional development, um, people creating parts for cars and, you know, things like that. It has, it, it doesn't matter what business you're in. There is just certain characteristics of business owners. There's certain things that you've, you've just got to have if you're going to be an entrepreneur. And recently I had a conversation with someone, a non-business owner, a, what, what would appear to be a successful person. Now, I don't know what's successful and what's not, whose definition are we using? I don't know. Um, he appears to be a very um, successful individual, but not a business owner, not a business owner. And y'all, if you're running an Amazon store, you're a business owner. If you're running an eBay store, you're a business owner. If you're on, running multiple stores, if, you've, if you're doing business online, if you are exchanging money for goods or services, you have a business. Now, I mean, I guess I could say if I looked at your profit, not really making any money, that you might have a really expensive hobby, but that's a conversation for another time. But you're, if you're, in, you're doing any of these things, you are an entrepreneur. You don't have a boss. There's no one telling you what to do. There's no one laying out your schedule and paying your check. That is you. That is the definition of an entrepreneur. So I was having this conversation with this gentleman and he's, you know, he was just like, I don't know. I don't know how you guys do it. I have no idea how business owners run their businesses. He goes, I would absolutely hate myself. He's like, I am, you know, I go to my job, I do my thing, I get my check, I go home. Um, and even if you're getting a really nice size check and it's something that you absolutely love doing, there's alleviation of responsibility. If something happens, if the company gets sued, that guy doesn't have to care. He doesn't have to care. He gets his check, he does his job, and he moves on with his life. But us as entrepreneurs, there's so many other things that people have no clue about. I mean, I, it's kind of joking. I'm being sued for something right now, which is just really, it's, it's really comical in, in a sense that like many years ago, there was a Google image that was on uh, one of our blogs or behind, it was like a, a, I don't know, an image that was used anyway. It's neither here nor there. We're settling in and it'll all be fine. Um, but the reality is there that if that happened to this guy, he, it wouldn't happen because he doesn't own the business. It comes to the person responsible, regardless if you knew any better, regardless if it was your fault or a fault of an employee or someone else, you're the owner, you're responsible. So you are an entrepreneur. It takes a certain amount of character and certain characteristics in order to handle being an entrepreneur because y'all, it's not for everyone. Just like this gentleman was saying, I don't know how you guys do it. I don't, I would pull my hair out. I wouldn't be able to do it. Even though this gentleman is perfectly capable of managing, owning probably all the things. It's just that certain desire that you're running your own business, that you're running the show comes with a huge level of responsibility, not just, Hey, I want to be my own boss. Well, great. If you're your own boss, guess what? You're responsible for all the things. The accounting, the taxes, the bookkeeping, the client management, hiring and firing people. Firing. Yeah. You ever fired somebody? You ever hired somebody? That's the, that's the owner's job, right? Until you can hire someone to run everything for you, you're the one. You're the one emptying the trash. You're the one ordering the supplies. You're the one putting the products together. You're the one doing the listings. You're the one that fixes problems. You're the one on the phone with Seller Central. 
entrepreneurship is not for everyone, but it is for those who have these characteristics and that are willing to work on them and develop them. And I'm asking, is that you? You've been an entrepreneur for a while? Maybe you wouldn't even call yourself that. I am. I'm calling you that. If you own something, you're exchanging money for goods or services. You're a business owner. And therefore, you're an entrepreneur. Unless somebody else is writing your check, you're an entrepreneur. And some of these characteristics, they've been studied forever. Um, for as long as people have been business owners, people are looking into what does it take? Do you have what it takes to continue being a successful entrepreneur? Because there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are not successful. <laughs> Let's just be real. They're not successful. So if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, what is it that you're going to need to do and be? Who do you need to be in order to step up to the plate and handle all of these things? Well, number one, number one characteristic I see is courage. Courage. Bravery, chutzpah, risks, guts, balls, whatever you want to call it. Gall, being bold, is a quality that enables you to encounter danger and face difficulties with firmness or I, I don't even want to say without fear. Y'all, I'm scared all the time. I'm scared to do new things. I'm scared to do, but I do it anyway because failure is better than regret. And I'd rather fall on my face or put my foot in my mouth, which happens a lot because y'all know how much I can talk, right? Loose lips, sink ships. <laughs> that would be me. Um, there, so I'm always, you know, I'm always putting my foot in my mouth one way or the other, but I'm not afraid to speak up and say things and make mistakes and be corrected have to have the courage to do the unknown. The thing that you're doing now, you once didn't know how to do. So how'd you get there? You had the courage to decide that you were gonna take a risk. Business is always a risk. Did you know that? Business is always going to be a risk. There is no guarantee, even in the best of the best training, even of the best of the best or the proven, you know, even like they say in the stock market, if you just put things in very, very low risk things, you know, you have a certain um, investment turnover rate, whatever it is, and it's been proven for a 100 years, even during crashes and things like that, you know, there's a very slow and steady kind of way to invest, right? Low risk is what they call it. But guess what? Business is never low risk. It's all going to depend on you. Do you have the courage to face the unknown. You've got to be brave. You must know that there is risk, that there's danger that you could lose, that you could fail. And you'd be brave enough to face it anyway. Brave enough to say, you know what? The result I desire is worse than, is better than the fear that I have. The result I desire is stronger than the fear I have to start and move. I mean, if we can just be honest with ourselves, how many times have we failed at something that we loved and we started over and did it again because we're like, oh, that didn't work. And yet we don't translate that back into our business. We just get scared. Why? Because money's involved maybe. But have you ever tried a hobby or something fun or something different? Or, I mean, I'm trying to grasp at straws here because everybody's different. Maybe you've learned, you've never been a dancer and you wanted to learn to dance. Maybe you want to learn to play the guitar or knit or do something that's fun and creative or just something you wanted to try. Something that maybe didn't cost you a lot of money. As far as risk is concerned, you're not going to lose your life savings, right? Starting, a, you know, learning to knit. But you know what? You're going to be bad. You're not going to be good when you first start something. Even if you have experience with certain areas, it doesn't mean that you're going to jump in and be really good. So you have to have the courage to fail. You have to have the courage to screw it up so that you can fix it, so that you can learn from it. Courage, bravery, doing it anyway. I'm scared all the time. I already said that. But I do it anyway because I'd rather fail than not show up. Show up for my own life. Let me ask you, are you showing up for your own life? Are you present in your dreams and your desires and your hopes and your future? Or are you just getting by? Are you just 
surviving and getting by. I've been in both places and there's hope in both places. But courage might be the next step that you need to take. How can you be brave today in your business? That is the characteristic. Brave enough to fall on your face in front of millions of people. You know, some of our technologies today that we love and live on, aka our phones, you know, things like that, were once laughed at by people. Like, are you kidding me? People are going to carry mini computers in their pockets? That was laughable generations ago, right? Or decades ago. And now it's real and basically like a necessity in our lives. Courage to not care what anyone thinks about your great idea. Courage to spend the money and invest in yourself no matter what people are saying, no matter what you think they're saying. Let's just be real about that too. A lot of times the stuff in our heads we think people are saying, they're actually not saying. To be really real, most people aren't thinking about you. They're not thinking about what you're doing, or what you're not doing, or what you're producing or not doing, or whether or not you're still doing Amazon, or whether or not you're, you're, you've moved on to something else, or they're not thinking about you. You're thinking about you, and you're thinking that other people are thinking about you because your mind wants you to be scared so that you don't take risks. It's this perceived idea of, per of protection, self-preservation. If I don't launch this new idea or don't tell anyone about it, no one can laugh at it and ridicule it. So freaking what? So what if they laugh? Someone once laughed at Uber as a crazy idea. Crazy. You're nuts. No one is just going to rent your car to drive you from here to there. Drive you around like a taxi. But now, how many of us have Uber and Lyft on our phones? Using it regularly. It was once a laughable idea. Courage is what it takes. Patience. Here's another favorite word everybody has, right? Patience. It ain't going to happen overnight, friends. Results that are lasting are not achieved in a fast pace. Lasting results take time to produce. Lasting results take time to produce. Just hold on to that. We are all in such a hurry to arrive someplace. Newsflash. It's a whole journey. It's a whole journey. Once you arrive to where a place where you think you're going to arrive, you're just going to have to go on another journey. You think you're going to stay there and just stay content? We are meant for growth. We were created to constantly grow and change and adapt and evolve as humans. So this is your not so gentle reality check that you're never going to arrive. You're always going to be in progress. So the question is, what are you in progress with right now? And are you being patient with yourself? Are you being patient with yourself? It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen at all if you don't do anything. But it's not going to happen overnight, even if you're working. Have you ever sat in the chair, walked your dog, drove in the car, and thought, am I ever going to reach my goals? Is this ever going to be different? Am I always going to struggle? Am I always going to have a hard time? No, you're not. But you've got to be patient. They say Rome wasn't built in a day. That's so true. We always get to see the end result of stuff. Look, on social media, you're seeing someone's end result after probably 10 years or more working. So every ad that you see, every program that they're selling you, every everything, remember that the person that behind that developed that over many, many years. Their experience, their trial and error, all the things they did, they were patient. They were patient. The results you get are the cumulative efforts of your consistent actions and choices over time. Let me say that again. The results that you receive are the cumulative efforts of your consistent action and choices over time. You don't gain 20 pounds on Thanksgiving. 
I always say that as like this analogy here because it's really true. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, you know, this and that. You do not gain 20 pounds on Thanksgiving. You gain that those pounds by eating chocolate and cookies and chips and drinking wine every single night. Small habits are the sum of our lives. Our small habits reflect who we are right now. So just take an inventory of how you're spending your time. Are you patient? Are you taking consistent actions regardless of the result that you see immediately? We all want immediate results, do we not? I want this yesterday, right? The truth is no one gets instant results. It takes time and effort. Also takes determination. AKA stubbornness. I used the word determination because I used to always call myself stubborn and I was realized that I'm not really stubborn. I guess I'm just determined. Drive, persistence, grit, firmness of purpose. Making up your mind about something. Being persistent. There's another word. There's another characteristic of people. Continuing or repeating behavior supported by a belief that a specific result will come. Yes, I sound like the dictionary right now. I understand this. But do we not grasp, do we not understand what these words are and what they mean to be persistent? Repeated behavior. Hello, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Repeated behavior supported by a belief, something you think, something you know, something you're confident in, a belief that a specific result will come. If I practice every single day, I will improve. That's the example of persistence. Even if I don't improve today, I will gradually improve over time if I am consistent. Repeated behavior that you trust will bring a certain result. Do you trust that your result will come? Or do you give up and stop putting the work in because you're not seeing it right now? determination, making up your mind that this is what you are going to claim. And you will take steps to get there. Determination and persistence. Now, I don't know. I've honestly have always been an entrepreneur. So I can't always speak to what it's like to work like in the corporate world. But I don't know if persistence and determination is always required. When you're showing up to do a job, being paid by somebody else, even if you love those things. I don't know. I can't really weigh in on that. I'd love some of your guys' thoughts on that. I'm not saying that you're, you don't have to have these things if you're just a, um, someone that's working and that doesn't, isn't an entrepreneur. And also, not wrong, just different. There's nothing wrong with not being an entrepreneur. I know lots of people that have absolutely don't want ever have anything to do with owning their own anything because they understand the weight that that brings. They understand the responsibility that it takes to run a business and they don't want anything to do with it. It doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means it's different. But how much determination do you really need if you don't have any goals, if you don't have anything you're working towards, right? Here's another one, people's favorite words, right? I'm just hitting you hard, y'all, I'm hitting you hard today. Discipline. Discipline. My entrepreneur business friends here, I just have to be honest with you. You can't just do whatever you want and expect to see the results. You must do. You must sacrifice. You will give something up to obtain something better. It's part of the job. Developing specific behavior through instruction and practice. That's discipline. Instruction and practice. Doing. As much as I love being an entrepreneur and being my own boss, I can't just do whatever I want. I have a team to support. I have a business to run that has specific tasks that I must do in order to earn an income. You can't just, this entrepreneurship isn't just, oh, well, I'm flexible. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, whenever I feel like it. Well, there's some truth to that. But did you know that if you work at Starbucks and you get sick and don't show up today, that they still make money and serve coffee without you? 
if I get sick and don't show up to work and don't do my job, I could potentially lose everything. The struggle is real. Discipline, specific behaviors, instruction, practice, doing. You are going to have to give something up in order to get something better. It's gotta be worth the exchange for you. Otherwise you won't make the sacrifice. I'll tell you a lot of the sacrifices I have made over time have been very much worth it. But in the moment, if you ask me, discipline doesn't feel good, does it? It doesn't always feel good. It's not usually a word all of us describe as like a really positive thing. A lot of times when we use the word, we use it out of envy towards someone else who we believe is super disciplined. Wow, he or she is super disciplined. But you can say that about you. You can say that about you. How are you disciplined in your business? You show up every day at the same time? Do you do the tasks you need to do? You don't have a boss standing over you? That's discipline. You've got it. You've got what the you've got all these characteristics. They're in there. How about commitment? Commitment to learning specifically. I am convinced that you cannot continue to improve, grow, and change if you aren't willing to learn and study new things. Always learning, always practicing, always improving. Accept your growth and decide you can grow more. There's really no such thing as a rival. We just talked about this. I'll be honest, I was scared to death to go back to school at 42 years old. You remember my story? Dropping out of college, basically them telling me to leave because I didn't have a major. I didn't know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I was just kind of like, what is all this? I don't know that there's anything for me here. And then I have an opportunity to go back to school doing something I love, which is business. It's like this accelerated business. I'm all in. I absolutely love it. I'm committed to learning. Whether it's reading an article every morning about something that interests me or learning to do things out of my comfort zone, like the bookkeeping and accounting and balance sheets and all these crazy stuff. Not my wheelhouse, but I'm willing to learn because I need to grow because I need to grow and change. If you always do what you've always done, you always get what you always got. Do something different. Expect a different result, but do it consistently. Optimism. Now, this is not always everybody's strong suit, and I'm not saying you have to have rose-colored glasses, but you do have to have a certain optimism to believe that what you're doing, what you're being disciplined in, what you're being patient about is actually going to work out for you. You have to have a belief, a faith, a confidence, positive expectancy that your work will pay off. Believing that you can believing that you're worth it and positively expecting the result that you worked for. This is not optimism like that. That deep core belief is not about sunshines and rainbows. It's not about rose colored glasses. It's not about thinking that everything is just gonna be awesome or that toxic positivity that people talk about that's like, oh my gosh, everything's fine, everything's great, everything's good as you're smiling and inside you're dying. That's not what we're talking about here. The struggle is real. What you're going through, your circumstances, your health, your finances, your your partner, your spouse, your crazy kids, your crazy in-laws, whatever's going on in your life, the struggle is real. And I'm not asking you to say that positive things are negative and negative things are positive, things like that. It's a deep core belief that you're going to expect the result that you're working for. That's the positive outlook. Look, I'm saying saying it to yourself. I'm working really hard towards this goal. I'm not there yet. I've got a lot to learn. I've got a long way to go, but I will get there despite the struggles, despite the life, despite the COVID, despite the sickness, despite the haters. It's a deep core optimistic belief that what you're working for is working and will work and will work for you and that you're worth the effort. It's a quiet resolve to choose to believe the outcome will be possible, positive. A choice to believe that that outcome will be positive. Let me ask you, 
Is this a choice you make every day? Can you make that choice every day? What I'm working for will pay off. I am going to have the result that I'm working for. And today, despite the struggles and the setbacks, I am still walking towards that goal. That's the optimism I'm talking about. Not the I'm fine, everything's fine, everything's good kind of fake optimism. I'm talking about a deep core belief that what you're working for is going to work for you. And finally, another characteristic of really, really successful people. And I think that's something that's really important here. For my analytical kind of people, this is going to be like, oh no, she's getting a little woo-woo here, right? Or whatever. But honestly not. Just think about it. Just hear it even if it's opposite of how you normally respond. Awareness of yourself and others, being self-aware and being empathetic goes a really, really long way in entrepreneurship. Being aware of what's around you, the people around you, the things around you, the culture around you. Get off your damn phone and look around. That's a really blunt way to put it. Your spouse, your kids, your neighbors, your teachers, the clerk at the grocery store. I'm not saying you have to be everybody's bestie and you have to be everything for everyone. Just be aware. Be aware of how you carry yourself. Be aware of how you treat people. Has your business gotten you so down and so stressed and so overwhelmed that you haven't even smiled at anyone recently? Are you the someone that people want to be around? smiles, encouragement, offering of help can make a huge difference. You have no idea how huge of a difference it can make. And finally, community. Community. A body of people having common rights, privileges, interests, goals. No one does anything alone. No one is self-made. Somebody has somebody somewhere doing something for them, with them, on their behalf. You need help. You need support. You need someone to bounce ideas off of. You need support on the good days and the bad days. You, bad days. You need a coach. You need a mentor. You need a therapist. You need a community. You need a pastor. You need a church. People to surround you to say, I hear you, I feel you, you're not alone, you're not by yourself in this. And you guys, there are studies around this. Now, I'm going to tell this story, but I'm going to probably get most of it really, not really wrong, but like I don't have all of the details of this study. But it was a very, very interesting study um, of a mathematician at that taught at UC Berkeley. Okay? So... His name was, oh my gosh, Yuri Theismann. That's his name. I'm retelling the story from memory. So hang, hang on here. And this is a very prestigious school and you literally have to have really, really good academic creds to get in here. So every student, no matter their background, they have qualified to be at this math, in this math class, at this, at this school in general, right? So the professor at one point noticed, and now this is a really high-end math class. I mean, like the smartest of the smart people are in this room, right? But what he noticed over time was that his black students were not doing as well as the Asian students. And he was really, really concerned. So he went to another professor, another colleague, and he asked, why do you think this is? Why are these guys flunking out and, and the Asian students are doing really well? And they have no idea. And, you know, the professor had something, the other professor had something to say. It was like, oh, well, maybe they didn't have you know, the right schools or the right training, or maybe they just can't keep up with the math rigor or whatever it is. And the professor was like, I don't, I don't think so. I think there's something else going on here. And so he went to his black students and he asked them, he said, can I observe you for, you know, the rest of the semester for a time and, you know, see what's going on. And what, and they said, sure, of course. And what he observed was that the black students were actually studying a lot more than the Asian students, but the different what the difference was, they were struggling. They were studying and struggling alone, alone. And the Asian students, they were studying together, in groups and communities. 
And so from that day forward, after he studied this for a couple of weeks and realized the habits and what was going on, he made it mandatory that everyone study in groups, everyone. And it turns out that just after a couple of months, they were all doing the same again. The difference was studying alone versus studying in community, period. Community is everything. If you don't know, ask. If someone's, don't be afraid to get help, ask for help, do the things. We all need each other. And guess what else? Guess what else? We need people that are different from us in our communities. We need to collectively gain different perspectives. Community. This is what makes people successful. No matter what. We need each other. We need different perspectives. We need same perspectives. We need outside perspectives. We need someone from a different culture, a different background, a different everything to speak into our lives and, uh, and vice versa. Are you in a community? Are you asking for help? Are you thinking, oh, I got this. I can do this alone. I've got, I'm, you know, a one man show. No truly successful person is a one man show. We need each other. There is someone else that can sharpen your sword and you can sharpen theirs. couldn't do it alone. Think about it. Think about every Grammy speech that you hear, every speech on the Academy Awards. People aren't saying, I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they did it. They put in the work, but they're thanking all the people around them that showed them what to do, that, catch, that caught them when they fell down, that lifted them back up, that taught them a new technique, that were tough on them, that was said, hey, no, you're not good enough. Get better. Do better. Be better. We've all been told that by somebody somewhere, I hope. Because you know what? We're not all good at everything all the time. We don't know things. Community is everything. Get into a community. Put yourself out there to get help and be supported. Support others. Generosity and sharing. Nothing is really, truly enjoyed until you can really be shared. Other people need what you have and you need what they have. Offer it up. Abundance is everywhere. When you learn, share. Look to give. Seek it out. It's not just for a good feeling. Scarcity is bogus. Share and help and serve. It's part of being successful. Now, I don't know about you, but I could definitely use some help in a lot of these different areas. Definitely need more courage. I need more community. I realized that recently as I'm going through this program, I'm realizing that every week I get to gather with like-minded people and that's my favorite part about it. Yeah, the learning and all that kind of stuff is, is great and I'm acquiring new things and I'm, I'm excited about that, but it's the people that really make a difference. So which one of these do you need to brush up on? Which one do you feel like it's lacking? Come in the community and share. If you're a wholesale bundle student, we have a place to talk about these things. If you need a community, if you have one that you want to share with someone else, share it in the group. Let me know. Reach out. Everyone needs a community that they feel like they belong to, that they feel supported and helped, and they feel like they can give just as much as they receive. If you don't have that, reach out. Now, I know you guys could be doing any other thing right now. I appreciate you listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this with someone else. Leave a comment, leave a review, and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.